So one of the great things about having John sort of set the vision for what we're doing uh, is that we're able to work with him and take this from the laboratory, from the university laboratory, into commercial uh, realization. And these, that's what we're focused on at MC10. We have a, a variety of things that we're trying to do, but as John said, we're trying to make, take these things that are rigid and brittle, turn them into things that are soft and curvy that can go on the body. And uh, it's a challenge. You have to be able to scale it, you have to be able to manufacture it, and you have to be able to deploy it, get it out into the world, and that's what a, that's what a company does. In terms of uh, what we've done, we're, we're trying to go from those wafers that John mentioned, and we're actually releasing electronics from what we term the tyranny of the wafer, because we're stuck with that today, into systems that can then be deployed on the body. And there's so many different applications right now. Part of the, the great challenge we have, and it is a challenge, is being able to do this in a way that makes sense for a small entity like MC10 to be able to grow and flourish. And we have to pick and choose. So what I want to do today is show you two particular applications, one in wearable electronics, much like what John just showed you, and also an interventional device that goes inside the body and reveals various characteristics about the body as well. We can measure all kinds of things. You can see just this very small listing here of everything from ECG to EMG, heart rate, blood pressure, and so forth. The promise of this technology offers a tremendous amount of opportunities in many different areas. But right now, we're looking at some vari variable types of things that cannot be done easily with traditional electronics, even the bricks and, stra bricks and straps and so forth that John spoke of. So one might be hydration where in the upper left of the diagram, you'll see an electronic circuit, very much like the bio stamp that John showed you under the microscope, that attaches to the skin, but actually reads hydration measures. And, in another, and more, most importantly, though, it's not enough just to simply measure that or even communicate that. But what do you do with that information over time? Ideally, you'd be able to store that, retrieve it later, perhaps use it for diagnosis at some point, uh, store that in the cloud, take it from your smartphone, and this will enable uh, clinicians, doctors, and so forth to be able to look at this data and draw conclusions from it and make not only a diagnosis, but therape therapeutic decisions about what to do about particular conditions. Now, this is, we're talking about systems here that are also for not only the, uh, the elite athletes, the Olympians, uh, the professional athletes who use this, but people who are sick or want to monitor their body because they may think that there's something going on. So there's many, many opportunities across this. The second application is an interventional device, a cardiac device that goes inside the body. And this, in fact, is a, this is a catheter that goes in the femoral artery in the leg, up into the heart, into the pulmonary vein, and actually takes readings from inside of the heart and is able to take those electrograms and form a picture of the activity in the heart in that area. The particular thing we're going after in this case is atrial fibrillation, which is essentially an electrical storm of the heart. So what do we do about that? Well, we can oblate to the tissue inside the heart, but in order to do that, you need to have a good notion of what's going on in the heart at that time. So this is a 45-second video showing a patient. This is conceptual. This is not happening today, although we have done a number of animal studies and other things related to this. But now as we follow the catheter into the body, the doctor is putting it into the femoral artery, up into the uh, various passages all the way to the heart itself, and there you see the catheter reaching its destination, deploying the balloon, which is the inflatable device, with the electronics on the surface of that balloon, and then withdrawing. That, pa that device can remain in there, and through various communication means like NFC, which is now becoming quite common in smartphones, that device can be interrogated, and you can then see what it's sensing at that particular time, or even through systems that allow that NFC device to charge it, and then uh, record information over a period of time. So you have continuous data. So I see I'm out of time, and thank you very much.